So I've just finished watching the football and I tell you what, City's undefeated run has finally come to an end. Liverpool have just, you know, just literally turned them over massively. So yes, I've jumped off away from that game now to record this confirmed transit episode for you lot. You guys have all been asking for this. So we're here today on a Sunday as usual with six new players that have found brand new clubs. But the fact that I'm seeing that, you know, these teams are winning, you know, Liverpool beating Man City like 4-1 or whatever, then it's just a mad day. So we're going to bring it in with some mad transfers, obviously. Now, if you enjoyed the video, guys, drop a like and a thumbs up down below. Always greatly appreciate it. Let's get 3,000 likes for a new episode next week, or this week even. And of course, if you want any custom controllers, check out Get Grip. Their link will be in the description. A lot of the controllers there now are sold out, so they're going to have to be custom made for you. Now, the first player actually is Arda Turan. He's finally left Barcelona. Well, I say finally, he has left Barcelona, and he's gone to Istanbul. Bazak it. Bazak Sahir. Oh, the mate. I don't even know how you pronounce that, but he's gone there alone, basically. Turkish League team. Now, Turan will see out the rest of his Barcelona contract on loan at the Turkish League leader. So they are winning the Turkish League so far, which is decent. So yes, this is pretty, you know, pretty interesting one. I don't think his Barcelona career has really worked out the way he would thought. Well, he wanted it to go. You know, of course, he's already moved away now. And this is not just a transfer for, I'm not going to say the team's name, but it's a transfer for Turkey. This is from the president of the new club he's at. So Barcelona announced the signing of Turan from Atletico Madrid for an initial fee of 24 million back in July 2015. But because of their 14-month ban on registering new players, he could not make his debut until the start of 2016. So he had to wait six months before he can make his debut for Barcelona. Sort of like the Diego Costa situation at Atletico Madrid. But yes, I mean, it didn't go too badly for him. He won six trophies during his time at the new Camp. He only made 55 appearances over the, you know, like a few years or whatever, which is not that, not that great. But six trophies, yeah, I, I would take that if I was him. To be fair, it's not too bad. This guy, Turan, the first player. So next up, we've got a player now going, where well, he's come to the Premier League, basically. And it looks like, you know what? He looks like not a bad player. And it's Alex Pritchard, Huddersfield Town. Now, he signed from Norwich. City for an undisclosed fee. I think they believe the fee would be around £14 million or something like that. But yes, Huddersfield Town have signed Norwich City midfielder Alex Pritchard for an undisclosed fee and a three and a half year deal. So not, you know, not a massive, massive deal, but still pretty decent. Pritchard, 24 years of age, joined the Canaries for £8 million from Tottenham back in August 2016 and scored seven goals in 36 league games for them. Now he is Town's second signing this month after they've already signed defender Terence Congolo, who was actually joined on loan from Monaco. I haven't featured this guy in an episode yet, so maybe I can feature next episode. I don't really know a lot about him, so yeah, that's quite interesting. Terry's boss, Wagner, obviously said to the website, I'm very happy to well, to be able to welcome Alex Huddersfield. Well, that was um, that was a lovely little speech, that. So yes, another one in the Premier League. Another player comes to the Premier League, obviously. He's been in the Premier League before with Tottenham. Obviously, he's only with Norwich previously, but yes, Alex Pritchard, the second player of the episode. Let's move on to the third player. Now, we've got this guy, okay? He's actually been in the Premier League as well before. we got Mvia. Now, he's on the St. Etienne, okay, from, I believe, what was it, a Moscow team or something like that? Now, there's not really a lot of information on this, but this guy as well. Where was he at? He was at Ruben Kazan. He came to Inter Milan on loan. He went to Sunderland on loan for a year as well. And now he's at St Etienne, which is obviously a brand new sign in Liga 1. You guys probably remember this guy's having pretty good old team card, I think, back in the day. I think he had a pretty good old team card. So he's made a feature because obviously he's ex Premier League and stuff for Sunderland. And not to mention, he's actually played quite a few games for France as well. I didn't realize he made this many appearances, but 22 appearances scoring a goal for France, which is always good for your international team. So there we go. They are the first three players of the episode. Now let's move into a fourth player already. We're already smashing this today. We're getting it through it. We're not dragging this on too much. Jan and Villa was the third player and we've got another player next who's actually another French international player. And he's left the Premier League which was, I think was a bit of a surprise actually when I seen it. When I seen it was announced like yesterday or the day before on Twitter, I was a bit I was a bit shocked that he's left this club because he's been there for a long time and he gave 100% every time he played and, but you know, he's adding to their problems in a minute. It's Arsenal's problems and it is Coquelin, okay, to Valencia. He's gone. He's moved from Arsenal finally. So yes, he's gone to Valencia for £11 million. Pounds. He's finally left at Arsenal, which was pretty insane stuff, to be fair. Like, it's always a tough decision to leave Arsenal for a player, I'm sure it is. Even though they're going for a really bad stage in a minute, a really bad stint, I think it's always, it's never easy. So, we actually did do an interview as well, actually explaining why he's left. He's 26 years of age. I feel like he's a little bit older than that because he's been at you know, Arsenal for nine seasons, which is ma which is absolutely huge, of course. So, he actually came out and said this, I'm at an important moment in my career. I did not have much game time at Arsenal, so he's obviously put that down to leave in. Didn't get many minutes this season and obviously feels like he needs to move on. And I needed to see something else to live another story. I have chosen a club with a strong past, a family club, and immediately I feel at home. I spent some ma amazing years at Arsenal. It's the club which launched my career and I'll never forget that, which is obviously we all know that. It was difficult to leave. I played matches, but not the ones which counted. I needed to grow some more. 
was. So he's saying basically he never played the big, you know, London derbies. He never played the big, you know. I actually did because I remember Hazard scoring a dirty goal against Arsenal and spinning him out. You guys remember that video? But yeah, I said he has left Arsenal on really good terms. You know, he's left on a good, good condition with Arsene Wenger. There's no, you know, bad blood or anything like that. So that's good news. I don't think you will ever see him at Arsenal ever again. That's not the reason why he's saying it. But, you know, clubs usually leave on a bad term and fr thankfully Cochrane hasn't. So yeah, that was the fourth player. Secondly, well not secondly, this is the fifth player and it's someone I actually wanted to introduce, not introduce, but put him in because he's a FIFA legend and I want to let you guys know that he has moved to a brand new club, if you guys are unaware. I don't know if he's going to be on my team anymore. He was previously, I think, with Shakhtar. Anyway, Marcio Azevedo, the only left back I know that was five star skill moves in the most recent FIFA, I believe. Could be wrong, could be right. Don't really know, but I'm sure a lot of you are going to let me know in the comment section down below. So yes, he's finally left Shakhtar. Well, it's only a loan deal, so you know, we're not saying it's permanent, but he has moved on and it's pretty, it's pretty insane. Wow, while I was filming this video, um, it's 4-3. It's 4-3 to Liverpool, okay? I, I left the game at 4-1, thinking that's the game done. Man City went on a little comeback, and it actually got back to 4-3. So, credit to them, and actually given, you know, fighting right to the death. I cannot believe it, mate. I've seen Twitter, everyone saying, just blow the whistle, blow the whistle. But, I've got to be honest, yeah, Man City were getting slammed. But they uh, they showed a lot of character to come back. 4-3. 4-3, that's a brilliant result. What a day for football, anyway. I don't know why. We're talking about Marcio Azevedo here. So, yes, he's actually gone to the Greek Super League Club. P-A-O-K, -okay. and they are the current squad, the current Greek Cup winners, I believe. So eventually, well, basically, they've now signed the player. They were trying to get him at the end of December. They've now officially signed Azevedo, and it's cost them 400,000 euros to loan him, basically. So I don't know what this is going to mean in terms of FIFA. Is he going to be on FIFA? Is he not going to be on FIFA? I don't really know. A lot of you guys can let me know on this one, but yeah, that's that's Marcio Azevedo. That's a legendary FIFA card there. So we've got a player now who's joined another Premier League team from a Premier League team, but it's only a loan deal, so it's not the end of the world. But we got Tottenham's, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Kudu. I don't know how you really pronounce it. But yeah, he's on the Burnley on load. This is a very good player with a big future out of him. Good prospect. So the youngsters, it says here, he's really struggled at Spurs. really struggled to get minutes and stuff like that. He struggled to make an impact over his 18 months at Spurs. Where was he before that? Let me, let me Google that. Oh, interesting. So they signed him from Marseille. He's only made nine appearances at Tottenham in, you know, a, a year and a half. I got hiccups now as well trying to make this video. This is just getting worse. And obviously feels like he needs to go away from Tottenham. Feels like he needs to go get some minutes probably the oh my god probably the right decision for him to be fair but will he get back in the Tottenham team after you know will it just will Burnley end up buying him so yes I mean the loan system is always strange you know because a player goes out on loan do they come back to the you know parent club a better player and then get into the parent team squad regularly do you know you end up playing really well for the loan team and the loan team try and sign him on a permanent basis that happens quite a lot as well and I get hiccups quite a lot as well that also happens quite a lot so yes guys they are the six episode or six players from this week's episode if you haven't enjoyed it drop a like and a thumbs up down below drop a like and a thumbs up down below be greatly greatly appreciated I'm gonna go ahead now and you know I'm gonna give my final thoughts and opinions and all these sort of players and stuff like that and yeah we're gonna go from there so we got to run to obviously I'm not even gonna pronounce it but yeah this guy is now left Barcelona he's gone to the Turkish League leaders on loan it, I mean we all think you know his Barcelona career didn't go that great but let's be quite honest here and Frank I think it went all right he got six trophies yeah he made 55 appearances probably wanted to make more but he's got six trophies at Barcelona and he's earned a shitload of money at the same time so credit to him yeah it's not actually that bad is it then we got Alex Pritchard at Huddersfield the guy that was ex Tottenham yeah he looks like he's gonna be a good player and hopefully he can do well at Huddersfield and hopefully, you know, there'll be one for the future, I guess. He's a youngster, 24, I think he is. Then we got Envia, the St. Etienne. No one really gives a poo about that. But, you know, ex Premier League, ex Sunderland. I thought he was worth a feature. He used to have a really good old team card that everyone loved. Ruben Kazan, he's left. And now he's gone to St. Etienne in Liga 1. So that's another player in that league for you if you want it. Then we got Francis Coquelin, who's left to go to Valencia. I was very shocked to hear that he left Arsenal. But like he said, he's not getting the minutes. He's not getting the minutes in the big games. So he feels like it's that time of the year or time of his career where he does need to move on and Valencia are doing very very well they've turned their you know situation around since Gary Neville so it's probably not a bad move for him then we got Marcio Azevedo obviously no one really cares about that one but he's a FIFA legend I felt like he deserved a you know a little intro into this five star skill left back very very good good player 
And yeah, I mean, there we go. And then we got Nkudu to Burnley. Of course, he went left Marseille for Spurs. Didn't really work out for him, but hopefully he can get his feet back in the Premier League and um, maybe go back to Spurs later on. Maybe Burnley are going to sign him on a permanent. I don't really know. But yes, there we go, guys. Has been very as always. Drop a like and a thumbs up down below. Greatly appreciate it. And literally, just as, as this video is finished recording or whatever, I've just finished watching the highlights. I've just finished watching the game. And Liverpool, mate, you just held on right at the end. But what a game. I wish I was watching that, to be fair. I come away from that game thinking, you know, 4-1 up. I'm going to come and do this video now for later on's transfer video. And I thought, I'm not going to miss too much now. But, mate, City nearly did the ultimate comeback. So, massive, massive credit to them, to be fair. But anyway, guys, if you have enjoyed this video, guys, drop a like and a thumbs up down below. I'm pretty sure I've already said that. Obviously, subscribe for more FIFA videos, more vlogs and stuff coming this year. I've got a lot of different stuff I plan on doing this year. I'm going to mix it up this year. I've got a lot of things to do. I've got a lot of different things I want to do. So, yeah, I mean, it's hopefully going to be exciting. So, yeah, take it easy. Peace.